Welcome to the public defense of the PhD thesis entitled Design Methods for Integrated Switching Mode Power Amplifiers. My name is Mladen Bozanic and my supervisor during this research was Professor Sorobsino. Here is the agenda for today's presentation. I will start by stating the research question and describing how the research hypothesis can be tested in order to answer this question. After this, I will identify the research gap and state how the research in this thesis serves to fill in this gap. I will then go into some details on the theory behind the spiral inductors, power amplifier output stages, as well as how proposed design algorithms can be grouped together into a streamlined design methodology for full power amplifier systems. Finally, I will present some simulation and measurement results used to test the hypothesis, followed by the conclusion. The following research question can be stated. What kind of methodology can be used to speed up the design of power amplifiers, together with their passives, or inductors, for a range of wireless applications, at the same time taking care that the high quality of amplification is maintained? The question can be answered by testing the following hypothesis. If the performance of a power amplifier system is related to optimizing its subsystems, then implementing a methodology that uses software algorithms to perform the optimization will produce better quality power amplifiers. The figure on the right of this slide shows the research methodology used in this thesis. After stating the hypothesis, the research and conceptual designs were performed. Initial research established that a set of algorithms can be developed in MATLAB that will streamline the power amplifier design flow. In parallel to the development of these algorithms, design and simulations of various power amplifier and inductor systems were performed. Upon completion of these two stages, Layouts of some design systems were sent for fabrication, followed by the integrated circuit characterization. Finally, the conclusions were drawn and aligned with the hypothesis. The figure in this slide shows a typical transceiver model with the transmitter on the top and the receiver at the bottom. After some signal processing, the input signal can be modulated and amplified in order to be transmitted over a channel. On the receiver side, the same signal is detected from the channel then demodulated and after some signal processing the original signal is recovered. Normally the, the block in bold is fabricated in a different technology from the rest of the transceiver system. So if the transceiver system is fabricated in a CMOS technology then a power amplifier would normally be fabricated in gallium arsenide technology. However, it is not always feasible to separate a power amplifier from the rest of the system whether that be uh, from cost perspective or from the size perspective. This is where the silicon germanium by CMOS process became a viable alternative. A by CMOS process can be understood simply as a CMOS process with a heterojunction bipolar transistor or HBT available for the design involving high power applications. Even with the correct choice of the active device, in this case this is the HBT, the rapid power amplifier design still poses a problem. This problem arises if a number of power amplifiers needs to be designed quickly, for example, for a device that operates in various channels in one band. This is due to the fact that the design of the output stage also involves the design of its passive components, including inductors and capacitors. The design of capacitors is normally not a problem, since one can vary the area of the capacitor plates to increase or decrease the value of capacitance. On the other hand, in the case of the integrated inductor, a complicated relationship exists between its geometry, parasitics, and the quality factor to its inductance, complicating their design flow. The current practice of inductor design mostly involves choosing an inductor from a library of inductors. For non-standard inductors, problems with inductor modeling can arise and paper-based inductor modeling can lead to inaccurate simulation results, particularly if no post-layout simulations are attempted. This and the following slides show the summary of the existing body of knowledge in the field of switch mode power amplifiers and their inductors. I'm not going to go into details of each paper listed in this table, but in summary, Many of the papers found in the existing body of knowledge deal with the design of a single power amplifier output stage or in the best case, a methodology for the design of a single output stage. These papers don't normally include a theory on the design of the passives, in other words inductors needed in the output stage. The inductors are handled with separate papers that normally propose a cut and try method for inductor design or, alternatively, an optimization procedure for one parameter influencing the inductor performance which is not the best approach, as you will be able to see later in this presentation. And the research presented here aims to fill in this gap by introducing uh, two major outcomes. 
A fully streamlined methodology for switch mode power amplifier output stages is presented. And secondly, the algorithms for optimization of inductor quality factors are introduced. This is important because low inductor quality factors are the main reason for poor power amplifier performance. The theory is fully backed up by simulations and experimental results. I will start the discussion on the proposed design algorithms by introducing the spiral inductor design algorithm. There are various inductor options available to power amplifier designers. These include spiral inductors, bond wires, active topologies or even external inductors. However, although complicated relationship exists between its geometry and inductance as well as quality factors, accurate modeling is possible for spiral inductors making them extremely popular in communication electronics. The figure on the left of this slide shows a typical square spiral inductor. D out is the output diameter of the spiral inductor, D in is the inner diameter, S is the pitch between the turns of the spiral, W is the width of the spiral, and the number of turns of the spiral can be marked with letter N. The figure on the right is 9 component single pi spiral inductor model, with LS the wanted quantity, the inductance of the spiral inductor. The inductance can be calculated with a data fitted monomial expression that has an error of less than 3%. The inductance is dependent on the output diameter, the width of the spiral, the, the average between the outer and the inner diameter of the spiral, the number of the turns of the spiral, and the pitch between the various turns of the spiral. The coefficients alpha 1 to 5 and beta are the geometry dependent coefficients and they depend on whether the spiral is square, circular, hexagonal, octagonal and so on. The quality factor is the second most important uh, way of uh, characterizing spiral inductors. It can be defined as the ratio of wanted and un unwanted quantities um, of the inductance circuit. In this case the wanted quantity is the inductance and the parasitics are all other components that can be seen uh, in the figure on the right of the slide. Uh, so the quality factor is heavily dependent on the capacitance, uh, CS, which arises due to the overlap between the spiral and the underpass. And underpass is this, the second metal layer that is used to uh, bring the inner turn of the inductor to the outside of the chip. Secondly, it is dependent on the resistance due to the length of the spiral, RS. Um, the capacitance due to the oxide on which uh, the inductor is uh, placed. Uh, marked as COX, and then finally, it is dependent on the capacitance and the resistance on the substrate, CSI and RSI. Due to the complicated relationship between the inductance and the inductor geometry, as well as between the quality factor and inductor parasitics, and due to the fact that the quality factor also changes the apparent value of the inductance as frequency increases, an inductance search algorithm was developed to find the best quality inductor given certain constraints. These constra constraints include the tolerance on the inductance value. In other words, how accurate must the inductance value designed by the inductance search algorithm be in the comparison to the wanted inductance value. Then the search grid resolution. The smaller grids uh, will read to more accurate inductance values, but the, the algorithms will also take longer to execute. And finally, the geometry constraints, which include the maximum size of the inductor, and the ratio between the output and inner diameter. This is important because it is known that the inductors can take up quite large import, uh, portions of the chip space. The figure on the right uh, is the simplified figure of the inductance search algorithms that I have been describing here. The algorithm as well as its model were verified by means of electromagnetic simulations. Additionally, the inductor was verified experimentally for the family of inductors provided to us by Austria Microsystems. The two figures in this slide show the inductances and quality factors of 10 sample inductors designed with inductance search algorithms at a frequency of 1 GHz. The figures show the values calculated by the inductance search algorithm versus the values obtained by electromagnetic simulations. In the case of quality factors, the good correspondence uh, can be seen between calculated and simulated data. Even better correspondence can be seen when comparing the calculated and simulated data uh, for the inductance. I will now talk about the design of uh, power amplifier output stages. 
The Switchman Power Amplifier stages has found their widespread use in uh, communication electronics because these stages can reach the efficiency of 100% in theory. The figure in this slide shows a single-ended Class E power amplifier. The algorithms can calculate the pass optimum com values of the passive components as C1, C2, L1 and L2 given the required output power, the supply voltage, the loaded, loaded quality factor, in other words the quality factor of the C2 L2 tank and the center frequency at which power amplifier needs to operate. The figure in this slide shows a simplified uh, Class E power amplifier output stage design algorithm. The algorithm starts by calculating the optimum output resistance of, uh, the, out of the power amplifier stage uh, from the given voltage supply and the wanted output power. If this resistance is different uh, from the typical antenna impedance of 50 ohm, which is normally the case, then uh, impedance matching can be performed to uh, match the antenna impedance to this um, output impedance. And um, the algorithm for impedance matching is also part of, uh, part of this thesis, and I will talk about uh, more details on impedance matching later in this presentation. If the optimum uh, load resistance is calculated, then um, and quality factor of the re of the resonant tank uh, is chosen, uh, then co component L2 can be calculated uh, for the given frequency. If uh, furthermore component C1 can be calculated from the optimum load resistance and the frequency of the operation of the power amplifier, and finally, uh, com uh, if C1 has been calculated, then uh, uh, given the loaded quality factor, component C2 can uh, be calculated as well. Class F output stage can also reach uh, efficiency of 100% uh, if transmission lines are used. However, this is impractical on chip for frequencies below 20 GHz, so a number of resonators is used to shape the waveforms so that the load appears short at even harmonics and open at odd harmonics. The efficiency that can be reached with 5 harmonic resonators is 90.5%. The algorithm presenting this thesis calculates the optimum component values given the required output power, supply voltage and center frequency similar to the class E power amplifier output stage design algorithm. The figure in this slide is a simplified class F power amplifier design algorithm. Uh, similarly to the class uh, E output stage design case, uh, the optimum resistance RL can be calculated from the given voltage supply and the wanted output power. Similarly, um, impedance matching can be performed to optimum antenna resistances if needed. Um, if um, a power supply is known um, and the load, optimum load resistance has been calculated, the current through uh, the driving transistor can be calculated as well, as well as maximum values of the maximum uh, of the amplitudes of the output and collector voltage and current waveforms. Finally, the equ equ equation at the bottom of this slide shows the relation between the capacitance uh, and the inductor of each resonant tank um, that is used for waveform shaping. And uh, power uh, the design algorithm allows the user to choose the inductance uh, value for the each tank and uh, calculate the capacitance of each tank uh, from the given inductance value. Normally, the most practical uh, a solution uh, most practical choice for the inductance is to choose a single inductance value for uh, each tank um, and then calculate capacitance from that uh, because of the difficulty or because of the complicated um, inducted uh, design process. The figure in this slide is a circuit diagram of the power amplifier as designed by the algorithms presented in this thesis. This includes the output waveform shaping as well as impedance matching. In summary, the algorithms calculate the optimum power amplifier parameters as described in previous few slides. Second, they perform impedance matching. Three types of impedance matching networks are available, L, Pi and T impedance uh, um, matching networks. Third, the algorithms design spiral inductors and this includes the waveform shaping inductors as well as matching inductors if needed. Furthermore, the algorithms can export mass geometry information of spiral inductors using design into a GDS file. GDS format is the industry accepted standard for layout and can be interpreted by many layout editors. 
And finally, the algorithms can export netlists of inductors and power amplifiers, and these netlists can then be used in SPICE simulations, as well as they can be imported uh, into schematic editors uh, so that they can be analyzed further. This figure is a simplified flowchart of the complete system design method algorithm. The user of this algorithm is presented with a choice on whether class E or class F stage is designed. Upon choice, the correct subroutine is invoked. The user is then presented with a choice to match impedance, and if so, the output matching network subroutine is invoked. Finally, the user is presented with a choice on design all inductors, including the matching inductors, and um, if so, the spiral inductor search algorithm is invoked, and um, the algorithm execution stops only after all inductors have been designed. This figure shows the sample SPICE netlist of a class F power amplifier. The first four sub-circuits in this netlist are the sub-circuits of spiral inductors. As you can see from this, in these sub-circuits, all the, all the passive components, as well as wanted uh, quantity, the LS of the inductor, are shown. The final sub-circuit uh, is the sub-circuit of the class F power amplifier itself, and this sub-circuit instances the uh, sub-circuits of the spiral inductors that are needed for the design. Further in this netlist, one can see uh, instance of the active device and all the capacitors needed for the power amplifier. This slide shows the schematic resulting from importing the netlist of the class F power amplifier shown in the previous slide. Various blocks um, in the imported schematics have been rearranged for clarity. The square blocks here are the spiral inductors designed by the inductance search algorithms. For, from left to right, one can see the active device, a third harmonic shaping waveform tank, fifth harmonic tank, the base resonant tank, output matching network, um, in this case a uh, pi matching network, and the uh, 50 ohm antenna. Hypothesis was tested by two types of verification, simulation and experimental measurement. Simulations here presented here are for the following specification. The process was AMS test 35 process, which is a bi-CMOS process from Austria Microsystems. The aimed output power was 17 dBm. The center frequency was 2.4 GHz, so that the amplifier would operate in the industrial, scientific and medical band. One class E and one class F configurations were designed, and the waveforms that are analyzed in this presentation are the S parameters, the collector voltages and current, and the output power amplifier output voltage. This slide shows the collector voltage, collector current, and output voltage waveform of the class E power amplifier. The theoretical shapes of the collector voltage and the collector current waveforms were, uh, were devised by Sokol and Sokol in 19. 75 and are also given in this slide. What one can see if compare if 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 compares if comparing the collector voltage and collector current waveforms to the theoretical ones, uh, that the, the simulated waveforms actually resemble the theoretical uh, waveforms. The output voltage waveforms is a sinusoidal wave waveform, and uh, this shape is due to the uh, output filtering as well as due to the impedance matching. And this output voltage waveform can be used to calculate the output power capability of the power amplifier at the frequency of interest. This slide shows the S parameters of the class E output stage. The most important parameter here to look at is the S21 parameter, which shows a good amplification at 2.4 GHz. Um, this parameter is supposed to have positive gain. The parameter S22 shows that output impedance matching is present at 2.4 GHz. In other words, that the design algorithms have successfully matched the output impedance. The S11 is the, is the parameter that shows the input impedance matching. What I need to stress here is that uh, no input impedance matching algorithm has been proposed in this thesis. However, a cut and try method based on the simulation has, have been, has been proposed as an alternative. 
S2, S12 is the least important parameter here, uh, which shows the gain in the reverse direction, and it is negative, uh, which is supposed to be the case. Class F, collector voltage and collector current waveforms are slightly easier to analyze than in the case of the class E power amplifier. The theoretical shape of the collector voltage is the square wave, and the theoretical shape of the collector current uh, is the half sine wave. And uh, one can easily see that these two waveforms correspond to their th uh, theoretical shapes. The output voltage waveform is again a sin sinusoidal waveform due to uh, uh, filtering and impedance matching at the output. If one looks at the class F as parameters, the similar results can be seen as in the case of the class E power amplifier. S21 shows the good forward gain of the power amplifier. S22 presents, uh, shows that uh, good imp output impedance matching is present. S11 shows the good input impedance matching, uh, which was done, again, I have to remind, by cut and try method that uh, was only uh, speculated in this thesis. And finally, S12 is the least important parameter that shows that there was no gain in the reverse direction. The experimental measurements were done on the process with the following specifications. The process was IBM 7WL process, which is 180 nanometer process. The output power was 0 dBm. The center frequency was once again 2.4 GHz, so that the amplifier would again operate in the ISM band. A class E output stage was designed and placed on the MPW with two other research projects. The figure in the middle is the photograph of this MPW, where the class E stage is just one circuit uh, amongst all of these circuits on the chip. The figure on the right is a zoomed in photograph of the class E output stage. Uh, and the package was 64 pin QFN package, which was needed to accommodate the circuitry on the MPW. And this uh, package is shown on the left of the slide. Some different approach was used when obtaining experimental uh, measurement results. Um, because it's impossible to probe voltage and current waveforms on the chip. So I'll first present the um, S parameters of the power amplifier. The important parameter to look at here is the S21 parameter, which is the forward gain of the amplifier, uh, which is positive, at, um, and it uh, resembles a peak at 2.7 GHz, slight mismatch uh, from the wanted uh, frequency of 2.4 GHz, which can be attributed due to the mismatches on the PCB. Uh, but at the same frequency, the S parameter S22 dips, uh, which shows good uh, impedance matching at uh, the output of the power amplifier. If one looks at uh, S11, it is flat, um, and that is because there was no input impedance uh, matching um, performed for the measurement uh, for the me in the measurement setup. Uh, so this parameter can be ignored. And um, again, uh, S12 is the reverse gain, which is negative and uh, it is not an important uh, parameter here. Uh, what one can notice from the measured uh, S parameters is that um, parameters S11 and S22 uh, have magnitudes of higher than 0 dB at, um, as one uh, moves further away from 2.4 GHz, and this is due again due to the mismatches on the PCB and the compensation that had to be done um, uh, to compensate for, for these mismatches that was inaccurate at, uh, at these frequencies because the setup was calibrated uh, at frequencies close to 2.4 GHz. Since the waveform probing was not done on the measured system, the output power capability of the, of the Class C power amplifier was established by doing the power sweep. The both simulated and measured figures are presented in this slide, and what one can see by comparing these two figures is that uh, in each case the output power of more than 5 dBm can be reached for the input power of 0 dBm. This brings me to the conclusion. In conclusion, a method consisting of a set of algorithms for the full design integration of switchmate power amplifiers was accomplished. The output stages looked at here were class E and class F output stage. The inductance search algorithms with netless and large extractor was developed as well. This algorithm opens up opportunities for inductor integration, not only with power amplifiers, but also with other devices that make use of spiral inductors, for example, loners amplifiers or voltage-controlled oscillators. The methodology developed here is feasible for low frequency range, low gigahertz frequency range, that is below 20 gigahertz. About 20 gigahertz, it becomes 
feasible to use transmission lines on chip. And as a matter of fact, in one of the articles that are published, I propose a methodology that can be used at microwave frequencies. Finally, although methodology was demonstrated in AMS and IBM processes, both silicon germanium by CMOS processes, this methodology is easily transferable to other CMOS and by CMOS processes. Furthermore, in one of the articles that are published, I demonstrate the use of this methodology for a CMOS-based power amplifier. An EDA tool based on the algorithms presented here has been developed. This tool is commercially available via business enterprises at University of Pretoria and it can be obtained by visiting the following address. This is the list of publications resulting from this work. The first four publications in this slide are the journal articles. All four of these journal articles appear on Department of Higher Education and Training accredited lists and two of these articles appear on the ISI accredited lists. This is the list of references used in this presentation. Finally, I would like to thank CSIR as well as Green Techovation for making their laboratories available for the measurement of the prototype devices. This brings me to the end of this presentation.